Hi, welcome. I'm Terry Meyer and you are joining me in my studio. I'm an artist and a soap maker. We are going to be making soap together. Whether you want to learn to make soap to create one-of-a-kind gifts for your friends and family, or as an alternative to commercial soap free of preservatives and chemicals, or possibly you're going to make it as a side hustle business. Creating and blending your own soap from scratch is an exciting new skill to add to your knowledge base. There's a variety of methods, melt and pour, cold process, hot process, and rebatching. This course is geared toward the holistic minded individual who wants to make soap free of synthetic chemicals using vegetable based ingredients of the cold process method. Making your own soap gives you control over the ingredients which goes into your personal blend as well as what goes onto your body. If your family suffers from sensitive to problematic issues, this can be further aggravated by the harsh chemicals used in commercial soaps. This is why I started making soap for my family in 2007. Both my husband and myself had skin problems. Once we switched to natural soap, the issues went away. It made a believer out of my husband who no longer uses any commercial soap products including shampoo as I make an all-in-one bar called the shampoo body bar which can be used for both the hair and the body. This recipe will be used in the soap making demonstration. I will be demonstrating the cold process method today which requires no external heat source. The cold process method incorporates using an acid and a base with which react with one another and neutralize into a salt known as soap. This process is known as saponification. The acid that we will be using is vegetable oil and the base sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. Even though the process sounds complicated, it really isn't. The different types of soaps are vegetable-based soaps, which use various oils such as coconut, palm, castor, olive, etc. Animal-based soaps, which use rendered fat from animals known as tallow or lard. Milk-based soaps utilize milk instead of distilled water. Now, how does soap work? Well, it removes dirt and grease in two stages. It attaches itself to the dirt and then suspends the dirt in the lather until a rinse carries them both away. Now, what determines the texture and lather of a soap? Well, it's directly related to the oils and fats used. Tallow and lard lather least coconut and palm oils lather more. Other oils such as olive, peanut, soybean produce a better lather in combination with coconut oil. Hardness of a soap is determined by the combined oils and fats. Tallow produces a very hard bar. Vegetable oils produce a less dense bar. Synthetic soap uses chemicals to produce optimum hardness and lather. Scent is achieved by using pure essential oils. And what's the difference between milled soaps and hand cut soaps? Milled soaps are made by machines that flatten uh, already made soap between rollers and then shred it. These soap flakes are mixed together and put through an extrusion machine which shapes them back into bars. This creates a hard bar and a polished appearance. Hand cut soaps are made with fat and lye and cut by hand and appear less perfect than milled soaps. Now there's three key areas to making a successful batch of soap. First, it's accurate measurements of the ingredients, uh, the proportion of oil to lye, and also combining the lye and oil at the optimum temperature. Making soap is really no different than baking a cake. Just if you were to put the wrong measurements of ingredients into the batter and bake at the wrong temperature, your cake would not turn out well. And let's say you did everything right in making the cake. However, you forgot to use oven mitts when removing the cake from the oven, resulting in burning your hands. These same principles are true in making soap. Proper measuring and temperatures are critical to the success of your soap. Also, you must be aware and respectful of the lye chemical you are using, and by doing so, there should be no issues in safety. What you're going to learn in this class, the type of equipment and supplies required, basic ingredients that's used in soap making, safety measures. We're going to make a small test batch which yields three bars of soap to assist you in getting the confidence in the soap making process. And then we're going to move on to a large batch of soap of 36 bars using the shampoo body bar recipe. That's the favorite in my household. And then we're going to talk about curing, cutting, and unmolding the soap. 
And finally, we're going to talk about creative ideas for packaging and selling. Okay, we're going to try our first batch of test soap so you can get the confidence that you need to do a larger batch. So there's only going to be three ingredients that you need for this test batch. First of all, distilled water, 100% lye, and vegetable shortening, or you could use coconut oil. And you need to make a mold. Um, I just took a piece of foam core, cut it nine and a half by nine and a half and made a little box out of it and that's going to be large enough for our soap solution today. Uh, you're going to need a measuring cup, a spatula, and a couple of either cottage cheese or yogurt containers, and this is optional, a scale. You could just use a measuring cup, but the more accurate you are in soap making, the better your results. So it's good to have uh, scale so you get the exact amount of uh, your product ingredients in your soap recipe. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with the distilled water. So I'm going to take a container and I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see it. And I'm going to put it on ounces. And it is on ounces, so I need four ounces of distilled water. Okay, and there is exactly four ounces. And then I'm going to put it in this glass container. Next thing that I need to measure out is the oil. So I'm going to use an, another container. And I have already pre, well, I pre-melted, but I have not measured. And so I'm setting this to tear, so it zeroes out the container. And I need eight ounces of this oil. Okay, and I have the eight ounces, so then I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to need that spoon here for in a little while. I'm going to measure out the lye, and before I do so, I'm going to put my mask on. Make sure that you have a well-ventilated area. Put my gloves on. This is the most dangerous part of soap making is just dealing with lye. And I'm going to put my glasses on. Okay, so I need one ounce, which is two tablespoons of lye. I'm at a half an ounce. Three fourths of an ounce. Seven eighths. And one ounce. Okay, put the lid back on that. We are ready to begin actually putting the ingredients together. Stir it. So you want to stir it until there's no graininess at the bottom. And as 
little grainy. You can feel a drag with your spoon. That means it's not totally dissolved. There's fumes coming off of this. So once it's dissolved, then the fumes will stop and you can take your mask off. I'm gonna set that aside. And you can see even the water is starting to clear up. It was a little cloudy before, but now it's clear. So that's now mixed. Let me take a quick temperature. We want to reduce this to 80, about 80 to 85 degrees. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to go get an ice bath for this so we can um, reduce the temperature of the lye a little quicker. And it's uh, right now it's over 100 degrees. I've returned with the ice bath. And so what I'm going to do is just put this in the water. And just let it set here for a few moments. It's at 90 degrees already. Um, well, actually, this is at 80 degrees. This is correct, and we're ready to... I'm putting it in the center, just to make sure. Boy, that cooled down in a hurry. Okay, the temperature of the lye has been reduced to 80 degrees. I'm going to put my gloves on along with my eye protection and I'm going to combine the lye and the oil. Okay, first I'm going to start stirring. And you can see right away that it turns into a nice creamy mixture. starting to trace already and when I say trace when I move my spoon around it's it's like when you um, make pudding so it's leaving a mark behind it's really thickening up Yeah, it's looking beautiful. And it smells very nice as well. It's got this little clean smell to it. It's setting up quite rapidly. Basically, once you can set your spoon in there, stand up, this, the spoon starts standing up, you're pretty much to the point of saponification and you can put it in your mold. Now I'm going to caution you about using um, a hard plastic mold with this product. It's kind of sticky and it's very hard to get out and I wouldn't recommend it. So I'm, I am happy with that. You can see what it looks like. Definitely a thick pudding. Okay, so I'm going to take my little mold here.
evening it out a little bit here. It's got a nice glossy finish to it. You can see that. Very lovely. It's been 24 hours and my soap has time to cure. It's nice and hard. And so I have parchment paper in my box here. I think the easiest way that I'm gonna take this apart just by cutting this on the sides. And then I'll use my cutting tool to cut it into three different bars. It is very sticky at this stage still. So that's why parchment paper is definitely necessary. So I have a camera up here so you can see what it looks like. It's very nice. So I'm just gonna turn it upside down. And I'm going to cut it into thirds. So I'm just kind of making a mark here where I want my thirds to be, and that looks pretty good. It cuts like a hard butter. And here we go. Your first batch of soap. And I am very excited for you to go to a larger batch and start experimenting. Because once you've made your first batch, there's no turning back. Now that you have the confidence, you can move on to a larger batch, and my recommendation is to do the shampoo body bar. And I have two size recipes in the handout that's provided here. So you could either make 10 bars or you could make 36 bars. So it's always good to start small, just so you test the waters and get a good feel for how the whole process works, and then start doing larger batches. So thanks for joining me and I look forward to hearing about your soap journey.